Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech DIY. So this time we come up, we come up with uh, Spring Cloud Service Registry with Eureka Naming Server. And uh, for this session, uh, we are having the key moments. So these are the key moments. So you can jump uh, on directly jump onto the key moment which you want to you are interest interested in. So that's what you can do. This time we come up with this uh, whiteboarding, some kind of whiteboarding we have done here. So in this whiteboarding we are having left side we are having our user and right side we are having services S1, S2, S3 with uh, running on different ports and different uh, instances. And uh, now uh, our, our user has to directly, he has to know each and every port on which the service is running and that's very that's very bad for him I mean he don't he need to have some, some kind of location where it, wherein we can he can check which services are active on what port what instances are running those vitals he want to know and uh, as of now he don't have that so he is a poor chap now what we are going to do the simplest answer for such problems in our real life also we have seen like in case of telephone numbers we have telephone directory so here here also we are going to maintain a register register of services and uh, mapped with their uh, service names and mapped with their IP and uh, their ports and each instance is running on what port that we can by that we can bifurcate Okay, so S1, for example, S1 is running on three, is uh, having three uh, active instances, S1, S, uh, S1 on zero, one and two port. Similarly, two and three also have, S2 and S3 also have two, two instances of each. So, this is what the registry looks like, something uh, registry looks like and these are the providers of this kind of registry. So, we have Zookeeper. Apache Zookeeper, Council, HashiCorp, Council, and Eureka, Netflix Eureka. So these are the naming uh, servers, or you can say like, in case of Council, it is API Gateway itself is uh, you know uh, more doubled up uh, as a naming server and API Gateway. And uh, uh, so now our guy is somewhat happy. He's what he is saying. He is saying this seems reasonable. At least I can see the services and their active instances. So I can refer them and I can, you know, I can refer them and I can call from there. So now our poor chap is somewhat happy. Then now, but our server is responding to him. Let's see what. Uh, these people, a uh, server and a uh, user, they are talking to each other. Let's see what they are, what server is responding with. <laughs> Let's see. So, our server is telling, if you empower me, if you empower me, Bear with me, my <laughs> English writing is not good as you can see, <laughs> specifically with uh, pencil, Apple pencil, it, it's somewhat not coming so good. <laughs> if you empower me with me here is a referring server, server, with routing, load balancing and other features, other security and those kind of features, I can serve, I can do magic for you. That's what our server is telling to this, uh, to our user. So this whole uh, whiteboarding tells us the whole story which we are going to see in today's session. Yeah, so he is telling, I can even give you the right instances and even you can route also through this. So that's it and now our user is happy with all these things. 
with configurations so friends in today's session we are going to refer uh, spring io documentation and uh, this is what the reference is and uh, we will share this in the description section of the video and uh, as you can see uh, this uh, here it shows the config server part i mean the naming server uh, part so pom naming server pom says uh, spring cloud uh, uh, netflix eureka client eureka server so that's what we need to add there and uh, apart from that uh, for client uh, we need to have uh, uh, spring cloud netflix eureka client uh, in gradle also uh, same way in gradle also we need to add that and uh, yeah that's pretty much of it and we need to for enabling the eureka server we need to have that uh, at enable eureka server annotation we need to put in the application uh, at spring boot applications uh, class so we'll do that and apart from that we need to have these configurations uh, need to set in our uh, application yaml or application dot properties in uh, in our server and here we are looking at the client configuration so for client we need to have uh, there are two ways now we can do it through discovery client and uh, through eureka client also so that's what we are going to see in the example and here as they are telling uh, we can uh, have the discovery client auto wired here and then we can get the instance now so let's get started so we are going to create our naming server uh, here and uh, the dependencies as we discussed earlier so we are showing you the uh, the dependencies here in the pom.xml so here we are having spring cloud starter netflix eureka server as i told you earlier also and with uh, the, when we add the cloud dependencies we need to add the dependency management section also okay and uh, in dependency management section as you can see we are having we need to give the group id and version and uh, type form and scope import so these details we need to give and uh, in version in properties uh, section we need to give the version also which uh, as as of today's date we are using 2020.0.2 that's the latest version of spring cloud so that we are using uh, for this example and now we are going to the application class and we will we will add the annotation required annotation for server eureka naming server so that's we are going to do here and under resources uh, for this example we are trying to you know instead of dot properties now we are going to use dot yaml instead of dot properties so we are refactoring it to dot uh, yaml file so that's what we are doing in in the current screen as you can see application.yaml we have taken and now uh, we as as i told earlier in the reference material as we have seen we need to add the annotation at enable eureka client or we can say like uh, discovery server enable discovery server discovery server is not there uh, we need to have enable eureka server so we are going to use that uh, so when we use in enable eureka server it says it activates the auto configuration for eureka server eureka naming netflix eureka naming server configuration and uh, as we can see here yeah so that is the first thing we need to do and then we need to do the configuration the default port for naming server is 8761 so those configurations now we will do on our let our uh, freshly created application yaml file so we are going to have the server port here which is 
we are uh, running the naming server on the default port i mean default uh, naming server port that is 8761 then we need to add we need to say that enable enable eureka client registration uh, register with uh, eureka so it prevents when we set this register with eureka false what it does is if you don't do this uh, the the server will register itself to the naming registry and we don't want that okay because other it will add one more entry in the uh, registry table so instead of that uh, we don't want that so we have returned uh, with eureka as false fetch registry we made it as false for this uh, server and uh, logging levels uh, we are setting as false level com netflix eureka off discovery off because uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, server don't need to be did not don't need to discover itself so that's why we have made this uh, configuration and now uh, now we are going to just uh, verify the things whatever we have done here yeah so that's the difference uh, between yaml and the property file corresponding property they have done as a property file and we are doing as a yaml file so yaml file is more uh, structured and more proper in terms of uh, as it maintains the root uh, i mean parent child relationship or you know the root kind of thing so it's always better if we can use yaml file so that is the one thing now what we are going to do okay now we are uh, we, we we have so many uh, projects earlier projects also we have created so we are just updating one of one or one such uh, project and making that a discovery client okay so yeah so to make that as a discovery client what we need to do first we have earlier way since we don't have the names of the applications so we are going to give some reasonable names to our applications to our uh, discovery client application so we are going to give those names so let's do that here we have the the property file existing property file so that what uh, so that's what we are going to do here and uh, pom.xml will go to the pom.xml and uh, do uh, add the dependencies here here and the good thing is uh, here in this project we are having gradle so by this you can come to know like okay uh, how we uh, we are going to add our uh, netflix client eureka client here in the existing application existing client existing service we are making an existing service a discovery client okay so what we need to do we need to add this under dependencies implementations we need to give this spring cloud starter netflix eureka client so this whole thing we need to give here and uh, yeah i think that's it we'll see and uh, you need to remember like starter netflix eureka client earlier one was eureka server okay so that's the difference between server and client configurations and uh, apart from that what else we need to do so in the left we are going to see so to talk to to make our service to talk to registry these are the things mentioned here we need to do so we are going to do that uh, it is telling about the bootstrap dot properties and or application dot properties where we need we need to uh, define the i mean uh, we need to define the location or we need to tell our services where exactly the eureka server uh, naming server or naming registry is running on 
so that we will do that configuration we will do there in the and uh, in our properties file but before do that uh, we need to add few more things in the gradle so in our gradle so we are going to add that earlier we didn't have this uh, these things like dependency management since as we have done in the pom pom also so here we need to tell what dependencies so this is basically we are injecting the our uh, or spring cloud uh, free cloud related stuff we need to put here so that's what we are doing here so this we need to this uh, maven config this maven dependency management configuration we need to do in the gradle in dependency management section and uh, here again we need to tell spring cloud version uh that version we need to configure here in the gradle file that also we will do here as it is done in the left side in the reference in our reference so here we need to do like this ext under ext we need to put that uh set that uh, version of i mean the variable spring cloud configuration or spring cloud version so our version is 20 2020.0. Uh, what is that 0.2 so same version we are going to maintain here also as whatever we are having for server so that's it now let's bounce the server bounce the client basically but it is saying some issue okay what issue it is configuration with name spring cloud version not found okay we have done some spelling mistakes <laughs> bear with me guys so typos so we have corrected the typo and we are bouncing back the server build is successful and server is coming up so once server comes up let's see yeah so now before to that we need to tell enable discovery client this we forgot okay so we need to add that annotation so we have added that annotation now and we need to tell on which server our register on which uh, port our registry is running otherwise how our uh, where our uh, application should look at for the registry although we have annotated that but we don't know where we need to uh, tell our service to register itself okay and before to that we need to have we need to add as i told earlier also for discovery server to work it uh, looks for the name of the application so we have added the name of the application as the time leaf mongo example and uh, apart from that we need to have the location on which our uh, discovery server is running so that we are going to do now so first we are running okay first we are going to start the eureka server and i will give you the first glimpse of uh, how the naming server looks like in this uh, uh, in this session this is the first glimpse of eureka server in this session okay you might have seen is in other sessions somewhere else, else also but this is a first impression here okay so it has started on tomcat port number 8761 uh, and path is default path so let's let's try to show that and uh, yeah and try to start the time leaf i mean the the client also discovery client also will will try to start that as well so our uh, both of the services are picking up bouncing up so now time leaf is up and it is as you can see in the discovery logs that also is registered here naming server logs they are also registered here 
now let's uh, let's hit our chrome and uh, let's get back to our playground and try to try to launch our uh, test material so here it is at this prompt is in this tab we are going to run the eureka server 8761 we are hitting it at edit so this is how it looks like here it shows this table instances currently only one instance of application timely mongo example is running on 8089 okay so similar way we will show we will add a few more uh, few more applications i mean few more services we will uh, add into that registry so here we are showing uh, multiple instances of uh, this uh, mongodb uh, spring mongo crud exam uh, crud application we are going to launch multiple instances of that and timely mongo as we have added earlier that also we will do yeah so as you can see eureka client service url dot default zone if you can see in default zone we have given the uh, place where exactly our localhost would be running i mean our registry would be running sorry not localhost the port and uh, registry where the it would be running that we have mentioned here in the middle screen and we are starting all the servers now so our uh, our eureka server is bouncing up and uh, service started it seems we need to give some time to it because it's a i mean we are going to run at least five or six services together in this uh, test so that's what we are trying to do here and uh, time leaf uh, time leaf uh, service is starting up as you can see in the uh, left uh, right most part so once that is done then only we will start the middle one that is spring mongo crud service yeah it will take some time because mine is not that much memory it's a old system so it's almost 2014 uh, system it is so it is somewhat slow and with the uh, with the latest big sur and uh, big sur os it has become somewhat more slow so bear with me guys in this particular section now it's taking some time i know yeah it has registered and it has started yeah we are going to look at the look at the our uh, eureka server i mean the eureka server ui naming server ui because uh, our services are still not started they are warming up <laughs> so let's run on 8761 and see what currently it shows in the registry so 8761 and hit it da 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 yeah so this is what and under the application names and instances you can see like it's completely blank because none of the services are started yet okay it's starting up we have to wait it seems so guys if you i if you are liking our work then please subscribe us share with your friends and colleagues so that also you can do 
and subscribe to us in large numbers so 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 it's taking time guys it's taking too much time bear with me guys but i know i have run it with uh, with many services together so although it's taking time but i know it it is still capable of running many services together so let's see it started okay 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 time leaf mongo db that application that that service uh, is up now up and running yeah it's up and running at 8098089 port uh, registering it's still not register not showing under registry so just wait wait for some time and we will refresh it again let's refresh it again yeah yeah now it is showing as you can see the application name is time leaf mongo example in the left side and available zones one and it is showing the port and the port is 8089 now in the middle portion focus on the middle portion we are we are going to start multiple uh, instances of spring mongo crud application okay application name is spring mongo crud and we are going to start at least two or three port uh, two or three instances of that service okay on the same uh, and all of them would be uh, would be mentioned in the single uh, listing or in the single row in our registry that also i will show you as you can see here yes currently only one is started so it is showing that on 8090 yeah on port 8090 we have started that port we have configured under application yaml now under uh, run configurations we have added parameter minus d server dot port equal to 8082 and 8081 so we are starting 8081 now so in the naming registry it should show the new port also okay that is 8081 and i think i'm starting here 808 okay 8081 is coming up now that server is starting now so when we refresh as you can see in the first record right here it shows up two up and two up and running for uh, spring mongo crud running on 808 8090 and 8081 and similarly we can just try to hit uh, on those two different ports yeah and default uh, yeah we are having this mapping this get mapping we have at uh, we are having in these uh, ports i mean these uh, services so one is uh, reading the blogs and the other one we are going to try for uh, time leaf also so 8092 8089 i think yeah i think 8089 it was will confirm with that i think it was 8089 my bad i <laughs> i should see in the naming server itself right why should i come and check in the console <laughs> the port <laughs> so yeah i mean that's the purpose of naming server right uh, right i should go to naming server and check there i'll check there I, I'll check there since uh, it's now I'm habitual to check in the console so much so that so much so that even I <laughs> I come here 
just like that and uh, try to see from here only so now let's see in this so it's 8089 <laughs> so that's that's how uh, you know that's how it makes our life easy we can simply go to the server console the sorry not server console server ui and we can refer what on what port which service is running and all those information all those vitals we can get on the on this ui this nice look beautiful ui all those things we can get yep and uh, so so guys if you like uh, our work please uh, subscribe to us uh, and uh, promote us uh, with your colleagues share our, share your thoughts give your feedback also okay so yeah we are we are trying uh, trying our system here we are making few more ports up for this service uh, spring mongo uh, crud and we are going to hit uh, our url from that as you can see now three instances of service one that is spring mongo crud are up and uh, you can see time leaf mongo uh, example is running on one port 8089 others are running on 8090 8081 and 8082 so you can see that oops white label error we'll see okay the port okay the mapping is different actually yeah mapping is slash all it was not default port so slash all we have added and as you can see now it is so here ends our playground session and uh, hope you have enjoyed this session thanks for watching guys please do like share and subscribe to our work that motivates us provide your feedback so until next session enjoy your life and uh, stay safe and take care of yourself